We have the another plenary speaker, and he is uh, what to call just a moment. Om Dakal is uh, going to talk on the just a moment. I just looking on. So our uh, uh, plenary speaker is Prof. Uh, Home Dakal from University of Portsmouth, UK. Uh, he is going to talk about the very long. His title is very long. He is going to talk about the performance target and ways to achieve industrial application of dead palm fibers reinforced sustainable biocomposite. And he can look onto the opportunities, challenges, and future preparation. I just want to give the brief introductions about the Prof. Home de Kahl. He is a full professor at the Mechanical Engineering uh, uh, at the University of Portsmouth, UK. And he lead as chair of the Advanced Polymer and Composite Research Group within the School of Mechanical Engineering of the University. He is also the visiting professor uh, of bio-based uh, bio composite material at the Faculty of Textile Engineering and Sustainable Biomaterials, Madan Bandari University of Science and Technology. And he is also internationally known working on the biocomposites and uh, bio-based sustainable composite materials. And he has expertise in this area. And also he is working a lot on the lightweight composite materials for different applications, especially for automotive, marine, aerospace building and construction industries. And he also covered the environmental uh, sustainability, uh, circular and life cycle, uh, contributing towards the, uh, uh, um, uh, to get the SDG goal of uh, UN. And Professor uh, Dakar leads multiple research projects within the APC research group. And he has 4.6 million euro on the sea biocomposite project and also one of the flower project. And he published a lot of works on the different uh, uh, topics on the biocomposites, more than around 150 or more than that peer review article he published. He also done three books, 13 book chapters, and also he, uh, he given the talk at different international conference as a keynote and plenary speaker. And he ha his H index is 43, and his uh, uh, has been also uh, what we call that's UOP investment in sustainable material design and facilities. And he is also reviewers of different uh, high impact journals. And he is also the chartered engineer, a member of American Society for Composites, and also the fellow of Higher, Higher Education Academy. And also he is a fellow of Institute of Materials, Minerals and Mining, IOM3 UK. So, Prof. Dakal, please come on the stage and give your plenary talk to us. Salam alaikum. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Zawid for giving such a long introduction. I very much appreciate uh, that. And obviously, uh, I am always following Professor Zawid. He's, we call him living legend in our field. So it is nice and honor to be introduced by such a dignitary. Thank you very much. Well, I have got a lot of things to say. But before that, I'll just uh, express my sincere gratitude to the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity. I always wanted to visit Saudi Arabia, especially Riyadh because I had the opportunity over the years to look after many students from Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in the University of Portsmouth. Some my PhD scholars, and some master's students, some undergraduate students, and many, many I have looked at their projects, and so on. So it gives me a lot of honor and very special uh, place to be here uh, in Riyadh. Right, so as the title says, it is quite a long title, uh, but uh, it has got a lot of uh, um, uh, aspects or elements. So I'll be trying to say that, especially what are the performance targets of bio-based composite reinforced with dead palm fiber. 
while I'm talking this topic, I'll be trying to link with natural uh, plant fibers composites as well. And then, uh, obviously, uh, the industrial application is the key challenge that we have been uh, discussing this from the morning. So, it is always an advantage to come a little bit later in the talk because most of the important things must have already been said in the mo you know, from your previous uh, speakers. I was very um, fascinated to listen uh, to learn Professor Arnold's talk in the morning and Dr. Midani's uh, very exciting presentation of some of the products that uh, he has and he, his team has been able to develop. And then later on, obviously, the plenary talk was just amazing. Uh, that was just, just gave so much insight. So some of the material that I will be sharing maybe overlaps, but uh, maybe in that situation, I will quickly move faster. OK, uh, the quick outline, uh, introduction and context um, um, of the topic. And then obviously, I'll be talking about morphological aspect of dead palm fibers, how important to understand their behavior and their um, um, morphologies. And then what are the performance targets that we are trying to achieve from dead palm fiber reinforced composite? So my talk is been, um, focused more on industrial application. So I'll be trying to relate to non-structural or structural applications of dead palm fiber composite. So, so that, that, that is that moving away from traditional utilization to semi-structural and structural applications. And then uh, uh, some of the composite developed uh, from dead palm fiber um, uh, um, reinforced composite and some uh, results and discussion and what are the key challenges and the opportunities as well as uh, uh, finally conclusion. Uh, Professor David, will you give me a uh, hands up five minutes before? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, in terms of context, 98% uh, of the composite reinforcement that we use come from glass fibers. You know, glass fibers are produced from petrochemical products and takes a lot of energy to produce glass fibers. And, uh, and then they are not easy to recycle. So, so the, that is the scenario at the moment. So it's basically driven by cost and functionalities, but not, not so much on environmental aspect. So that is the picture that we can see on the left hand side, and that is the growing trend. And if we are using materials the way we are using now, and the technology we have, and the materials use rate that we have, consumption rate we call it, we need three and a half more Earths to be satisfied or to meet the requirement. But we only have one Earth. So that is the massive challenge that we have. And as you can see, the materials consumes almost 25% of overall CO2 emission worldwide. When I say materials, it can be material extraction, processing and production, use, end of life, and transportation in during different stages. So it becomes very important to look after the materials aspect. Then as you can see, uh, the consequence of uh, um, uh, uh, human activities uh, on environment and damage caused by uh, uh, the, uh, the unprecedented use of materials, I would say. So um, two years ago in England, U uh, UK, we had a very hot summer, which we, I never had experienced. I moved to UK from Nepal 1992, and I never had experienced that kind of weather. And that was, we had no, uh, the system is not, was not designed for that. So everybody was panicking what to do, go and buy fans or you know, what to do. So, and flooding in Europe, and flooding in Pakistan, and you can see in the wildfire in Australia, wildfire in the USA, very unusual weather patterns that we have seen because of uh, the climate crisis. So, the importance of looking after materials is very important. So, so that is my, uh, my talk. So, if we can produce something that has got less environmental impact, I think that we, we contribute something towards it. So, Okay. Okay, thank you. 
Right. I remember 2008, we were doing some life cycle assessment of glass fiber and flux fiber reinforced composite. And our question, our research question was, can flux fiber be environmentally friendly in comparison to glass fiber? So we say a lot of things about natural plant materials. We are passionate about it. But can life cycle assessment prove that? So we came out uh, with a result because somebody, a uh, technical colleague are changing something, so I, I just want to use that time. So we came up with the result that uh, glass fiber, for one ton of glass fiber, it would, it would cost you about 56 megajoule, uh, whereas for one ton of flax fiber, it would cost you about 34 megajoule. But by then, uh, 2008, we, we had not had enough um, uh, data for life cycle inventory, so we have to do a lot of assumption. But now we have got a lot of information, so the case is still the same. Okay, and uh, this slide gives a little bit of information on what we are doing at the Advanced Polymer and Composite Research Group at the University of Portsmouth. Uh, we are working natural fiber reinforced composite, especially bio based composites, uh, to be used in uh, semi structural or structural applications. So we do impact testing behavior on the left-hand side. Uh, we did some work on uh, carbon fiber composite as a reference material, and we use out-of-autoclave and autoclave techniques to measure the performance. If we can use out-of-autoclave technique to produce same material and give same performance, why to go to autoclave technique, which consumes a lot of energy and which is environmentally um, is more uh, um, energy um, uh, uh, con uh, consumption process. So we came the result that we had five joule, ten joule, twenty-five joule. By the way, this material was uh, aimed to be used in fuselage in, uh, in aerospace application. So out of autoclave process, gave very similar properties um, um, produced by uh, uh, autoclave. So that was quite an interesting uh, result. And then we, uh, we look water absorption behavior of different natural fiber composites and their effect on performance. Uh, we uh, look different um, um, uh, hybrid composite to compensate some of the drawbacks of natural plant fiber composites. We use uh, 3D printing for making bio-based composites and we look a lot of uh, characterization and so on uh, for these materials. One particular slide I want to share is uh, in the middle. And there are um, four uh, different polymers. One is polypropylene and uh, um, uh, PBS, and then PS and PLA. So two are very industrially established polymers, and two are biodegradable polymers. And then we put that flax fiber on them, and we look the properties. And then we com came up that these both materials outperform conventional polymers. Um, so that was very uh, in encouraging result. And one benchmark, when we are talking about um, uh, dead palm fiber performance target, I will come to that a little bit later. Uh, here we, uh, we managed to obtain 100 megapascal. I always say 100 megapascal is almost like benchmark because if you want to use um, uh, natural plant fiber reinforced composite or biocomposites, uh, if you want to use this for, for example, tr uh, uh, engine tray, it uh, um, uh, defined by OEMS, original equipment manufacturers, 100 megapascal of tensile strength is required. That's the basic performance requirement. So if we can get bio-based composite or even biocomposite, here we are using PSA and um, PLA and flux fiber, completely bio um, um, uh, composite, and you are getting 100 megapascal of tensile strength, which was just amazing. Right, so uh, Professor Zabid uh, briefly mentioned the two projects that we were involved and in. these both projects completed and this project is called Flower Project. We had eight different partners and uh, uh, our aim was to develop flax fiber reinforced composite with end of life recycling aim and to be used in automotive application, marine application and some other engineering application. It takes quite a long time to move. Okay, so we had eight partners of four academic institutions, um, ourselves and University of Cambridge, and then we had two universities from France, and we had eight, um, I'm sorry, four other industrial partners. And this project uh, um, um, developed 
amazing material, non-oven, 100% uh, flax, obviously, and then 50% biopolymer. And then we had long fibers, biaxial, triaxial, non-cream uh, fabric. And then we tried to um, use this for automotive application and marine application. And we achieved amazing results from this uh, project. We had uh, four PhDs completed from this project, and we had two postdocs working in this project. And then we managed to publish almost 35 uh, journal articles. One article, um, even we managed to publish in Progress in Material Science. So the students, were, PhD researchers especially, worked very hard. And last summer, we were in France, Concarno, and we, we uh, used flax fiber reinforced epoxy board completely replacing glass, uh, glass fiber, and it is still in operation. So this was a really big achievement uh, that we uh, uh, got from this project, and we also got uh, an award called Jack Award, which is a very prestigious award for composite materials. Then another project uh, we were involved uh, was Sea Biocomp. In this particular project, we use only thermoplastic material and use flax fiber, and using um, uh, an advanced manufacturing process and 3D printing process to make composites. And in this project also we managed to make some good demonstrator and we learn a lot from this project as well. Uh, so we have 11 different partners for this project. Why I'm saying about this project is we can achieve amazing performance if we can manage to combine the materials and on the properties and, uh, and manufacturing process. So that, that is my idea to share this uh, uh, outcome of this project. So we looked long-term durability of materials that we developed, and we looked ecotoxicological eco aspect, uh, leachant and so on coming from the material because this uh, material were aimed at using marine applications. And then we also looked at life cycle assessment of this, of this material produced. Right, so I'd like to hear, just to share some of the facilities we have got in our research group. The reason why I'm sharing this is facilities acquisition and maintenance is very costly thing. We all know that. Uh, so if we know each other who so have got what, maybe we can collaborate. So it's just very quick, uh, uh, quick uh, sharing what are the facilities that we have got. We have got manufacturing capabilities. We have got compressor molding. We have got uh, um, the resin transfer molding. We have got three, uh, uh, four axis, five axis uh, CNC machine. We have got watershed cutting and so on. So um, if, you, if you are thinking something in that area, please uh, do write uh, email. We have got amazing um, uh, characterization techniques available to us. Uh, X-ray micro city of different capabilities uh, uh, in our lab. And we also have got 3D printing for metallic materials. And then um, we have got different uh, characterizations, the machine, uh, SEM, ESEM, and uh, X-ray diffraction, and AFM, and so on. Right. So, so here, I would like to just go very quickly. Uh, those who are working in bio-based composite or composite sector, I don't need to dwell so much on this. I think we, we are very familiar with this uh, aspect, obviously, but I just want to go very quickly. Um, what are the attractive attributes? Why we are working on natural fiber composite, bio-based composite? Because there are so many attractions. Well, um, obviously, government legislation is another challenge that, uh, that companies need to focus. If we talk about automotive industries, this morning, uh, Dr. Midani was mentioning that uh, there was a question from audience, you know, how fast, where you are, uh, and he was mentioning niche market, because there are government legislation putting pressure on OEMS to go not only cost, but environmental aspect is very, very important. So if we can use lightweight composite materials, then um, we can reduce CO2 emission as well as cost. So this is regarding automotive industries. We can take similar examples to marine industries, for example. They also have a lot of, uh, they used to use uh, glass fiber, unsaturated polyester, use hand layer method and make a boat and use it and at end of life throw, throw away. But they cannot do that now. There are legislation that they need to follow on those legislation. So they also now need to focus not only uh, glass fibers and uh, unsaturated polyester, thermoplastic, but they need to think about sustainable materials. So sustainability has come uh, into play. And then obviously um, uh, mechanical properties are of interest uh, for load-bearing application. 
and then obviously understanding failure mechanism is very important. So I have just one slide on the right hand side, just looking at uh, energy consumption uh, from uh, polypropylene and glass fiber and the composite and PLA. So you can see what I was already referring to. Uh, they are far, far environmentally friendlier. Right. Um, I like this uh, picture. It's um, a team from uh, University of Guelph, Professor Monti uh, and co-workers um, put this in a uh, uh, review paper. Uh, it's a lot of uh, materials that we can see, reinforcement, matrix, biocomposite examples, fully biodegradable, partially biodegradable, non-biodegradable. And then what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages? Obviously, one of the um, drawbacks of using natural fiber reinforced composite, including dead palm fiber, is that uh, the long-term durability and addition between the fiber and matrix. Somebody was saying earlier, um, the fibers are hydrophilic and most of the polymers are hydrophobic. So when you put uh, water and oil, it's very difficult to mix. Similar kind of concept. So th that's one of the challenges. And long-term durability is another, another issue that we come up with natural palm fibers. Otherwise, they have got amazing um, uh, attractive attributes. Uh, low cost, uh, renewable resources. In, in fact, uh, dead palm fiber is uh, coming from, uh, um, you know, residue. Uh, this morning, one of the um, uh, um, uh, colleagues from um, the panel said, don't use waste, it's a residue. So I will try to use that word residue. So coming from, so that has got amazing environmental benefit. Right, so if I move uh, further, so this is just a summary of dead palm fiber. Those attributes that you can get from natural plant materials as a reinforcement, you can get from dead palm fiber. But this is one more attractive attribute dead palm fiber has got is elongation because of this morphological structure. And also it's a very cost effective. It's coming from um, uh, residue. So, so the, the, that, that is a, a, a very big advantage compared to other uh, natural plant fiber reinforcement or established uh, materials, flax, hemp. Perhaps they have got higher stiffness and strength, but dead palm fiber has got another attraction. So I need to move quickly here. Right, so obviously if you talk about whole natural fiber composite, obviously they are more environmentally friendly, uh, sustainable materials, but one challenge that we have got, can we bring multifunctionality? Five minutes left, oh my goodness, I cannot believe. Okay, so just if we look at the hemp fiber, flax fiber, jute fiber, dead palm fiber, in terms of specific strength, they are comparable. So that is what I would like to say from, from this slide. So I need to move faster. It takes three times for me to, to get the, uh, the slide I wanted. I want to skip this. There are different application areas, aerospace, marine, renewable energy, automotive, road, transportation, construction, sports and leisure, electrical, electronic. We are currently working, making printed circuit board from jute, palm, uh, jute fiber. So jet palm fiber can be equally used for, uh, for those applications. Right, so automotive industries, uh, there are different ways to reduce CO2 as well as cost. Light weighting is one area that can, uh, the, the we are focusing and we can use jet palm fiber as, as a materials. Right, uh, so again, and the light weighting is driven by cost as well as um, um, uh, CO2 uh, emission aspect. Uh, so don't want to say more than that in this slide. So this slide I, I really like is a Professor um, Javid and his team, uh, uh, Professor Spahn, uh, work in the University of Putra, Malaysia. So they are comparing jet palm fiber with other established um, natural plant materials. And jet palm fiber has got amazing benefit strength to weight ratio as well as strength to cost ratio. The cost is a very important factor when you develop composite materials. So that has got amazing attraction. I think we should, we should take that, uh, um, that benefit. We should capitalize that. So this is my key topic. Now, just, I have just entered my key, key topic, but then I, I have time concern. Well, what are the key performance targets of jet palm fiber reinforced composite? Well, what is the mechanical performance? Where are we going to use this? That determines the uh, performance. If we are using jet, um, jet palm fiber reinforced composite for uh, engine tray, then tensile strength has to be 100 megapascal minimum. That, that is the benchmark. 
Maybe we don't need to go to that at the moment. We can, there are other application areas that we can take uh, uh, debt from fiber. Maybe there are uh, fibers and damping uh, um, uh, aspects you need to be, uh, be uh, taken care of or fracture toughness behavior and so on. Thermal stability, jet pump fiber has got quite good thermal stability because of the chemical constituents they have. The silica has uh, maybe helps. Then, well, this is very, um, um, very popular diagram. Uh, what we did in University of Portsmouth, we took the fiber from different parts of the uh, dead palm tree and then we, we uh, characterized them. And then we looked the diameter of the fiber, um, that they varied, obviously, and this is not, not a circular diameter. So it's a more uh, um, uh, ellipse-type diameter. And then, obviously, that has uh, effect on performance. Then, obviously, we have to look um, um, uh, Processing structure and properties. So morphological aspect affects the pro performance. Um, you know the um, uh, the composition uh, and then what you add there, and then also the um, the uh, processing the um, uh, the parameters that you use. We are trying to use machine learning process to to come up with optimized parameter for composite manufacturing. So that is another area that we need to look at. Then, then that affects the properties. So now I don't want to go too much here because the, the, those five different parts which we extracted from the dead palm um, um, the tree are, are, are looked at, their diameter, their morphological aspect, and we did some single fiber testing, and they give different performance. And that is one of the challenges for using the dead palm fiber, is a variability. When you, I, I, I do talk with automotive industries, OEM, several times, and I say, why don't you use your flax fiber? Well, they say, well, one of the problems with flax fiber is that there is non-uniform uh, diameter. When you do the, um, you know, modeling, you need to put the parameters, and then what diameter do you put? So all the, all the performance is very varied. The, if you go in summer and winter, the property is completely different. So they, they do talk about this, so this is one of the challenges, but we shouldn't be dwelling on this. There are so many other advantages, take the advantage and forget, uh, don't worry too much about negative things, try to improve that. Right, so again here, uh, so just looking at the, the, the diameter of the fiber and different diameter gives different aspect ratio, different aspect ratio gives different properties. So here I just want to give the, um, the performance of jet palm fiber reinforced composite. So our tensile strength is not amazingly great, but depends on where you are applying. What is the application? So that is again uh, very important. If you are using for e engine tray, but th th this is not uh, good enough, only 25 megapascal, um, and close to 25. But if you have other application, then th th that is a different matter. So here again, I wanted to share this. The process parameters are very important. If we can maintain that, we can get high performance. So again, uh, this, uh, this work wa was um, um, uh, uh, published in industrial crops and products. And uh, we again looked at the, the jet palm fiber. Again, we received this from Saudi Arabia. And then we put in the small uh, size and then we extruded. We made uh, composite laminates and then we looked different properties. Among them was impact of this behavior. We compared with hemp fiber and, and, and um, uh, jet palm fiber PCL, uh, polycarpal electron, and they are very comparable. So this is uh, exciting things. And some, sometimes jet bomb fiber reinforced composite gives a, a better performance than established natural fiber reinforced composite. Then obviously we looked on, um, on the, the morphological structure, damage behavior, and so on. So jet bomb fiber reinforced composite was no different than uh, hemp fiber reinforced composite. In terms of thermal stability, uh, even dead palm fiber gave uh, superior performance than other established uh, natural palm fiber um, uh, composites. So that, that is again, if you look at the DME, dynamic mechanical analysis, again, storage modulus and loss modulus uh, were better for dead palm fiber reinforced composite than other, um, other. So that is again another very encouraging sign that we can use dead palm fiber reinforced composite for many other applications where thermal stability is very important. Yeah, so I didn't want to go too much here. We also um, used a lot of um, modification process that uh, some of the speakers have already uh, spoken earlier. Then you have to have the uh, concentration right. If you use too much, that has no effect. If you do, um, um, I mean, it damages the fiber. If you have less concentration, then it, it doesn't make much effect. So selecting quite, uh, you know. So then uh, fracture toughness behavior, this is another very fascinating work. One of my PhD scholars, Fahad Al-Mansur, who works now in, in Riyadh as a researcher, and uh, did amazing work um, in this um, project. 
in this PhD project, and his work was published in two very prestigious journals, Composite Structure and Composite uh, Science and Technology. I feel so happy, so proud just to see those work. So here again, we are trying to use, um, you know, understand fracture toughness behavior. So if we are trying to use dead form fiber reinforced composite for um, structural or semi-structural application, understanding fracture toughness behavior, impact toughness behavior, um, and then uh, fatigue behavior, vibration damping behavior is very important to understand. So that is my message from this slide. So, yeah, again, here, just the technique to uh, enhance the fracture toughness behavior by using stitching technique and the hybrid technique. So don't want to dwell too much on this one and uh, want to move forward. Again, where do you want to use um, um, gate pump fiber reinforced composite? Machining is another important aspect. If you are making a drilled hole, uh, if you are, um, um, then understanding how the hole quality, how it uh, behaves is very important. Uh, so so the, the, this is another area that we have been working at the University of Portsmouth, understanding machining behavior of natural fiber reinforced composite, including dead pump fiber reinforced composite. So again, moisture absorption behavior, understanding their uh, effect on performance and damage behavior is very important. Again, key performance targets is very important, but we, don't, we need to understand well, what is the application area? Where are we going to ap apply these uh, materials? Uh, long-term du durability, long-term um, um, uh, performance is very important once you put in a moisture or humid condition. Uh, so this is uh, another area that uh, requires a lot of attention. For flax fiber, hemp fiber, other natural plant fiber composites, a lot of work has been done in this area, but not so much on dead palm fiber reinforced composites. So that is another area that our researcher can focus, we can focus. Oh. oh. <laughs> How do I go back? Okay, right. Again, the, the, the future direction at uh, Dead Farm Fiber is obviously there are different applications we can think of. One of the areas in Portsmouth, University of Portsmouth, we are focusing is packaging materials. So I will be sharing some of the uh, outcome of that research tomorrow, not so much today, but packaging is another key application area that this, this material can be used. So again, I don't want to go too much on the packaging. Is a 46% of the polymers are used in packaging. So if we can bring some sustainable material there, we can make significant impact, positive impact to our environment. Right, again, cellulose um, uh, nanocrystals uh, um, extraction of, from dead palm fiber is uh, one of the areas that we are currently working, focusing on. This is an amazing area to go uh, ahead on dead palm fiber. I think this is a very exciting area. One of our PhD students, in fact, he prepared this slide. So, Professor, can you please, when you talk about packaging material, can you please use this slide? And this is one of my PhD scholars who is working on packaging material uh, produced. So, again, there is an amazing um, opportunity for us to make fully biodegradable packaging material. So, um, a new advancement, what can we bring in the future? Obviously, manufacturing technique is important. Bio um, uh, pre uh, is important. Manufacturing process is important. Understanding failure behavior is important. Professor David, I will be st stopping in very, very soon. Right. Again, what are the ways we can improve performance of um, um, jet pump fiber composite? One of the ways we can use is a hybrid approach. I have seen some of the papers in hybridize, hybridizing dead palm fiber, but the performance has not been am amazingly achieved. But there are ways, there are challenges in hybridizing material. You can just put hybridizing material, like flax fiber, um, dead palm fiber put together, make a composition. It doesn't work like that. It's not like a plug and play system. But you have to understand a hybridizing mechanism, a compatibility. So one of the work that we have been working in a hybridizing composite material, and then um, uh, compensate the drawback of natural plant fiber composite with hybrid material. But then it becomes complex when you try to dismantle them, when you try to reuse them or recycle them. So there are a lot of benefits coming from hybrid approach. One of, the, one of them is moisture increase. If you can put uh, um, 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 moisture repellents, fibers outside, and then put flax fiber inside, then you can uh, prevent um, moisture ingress, uh, and then uh, so on. There's another way we can enhance performance is fiber metal laminates. So it can enhance, this is what we are doing. This is one of my colleagues in the research group uh, uh, has been involved. Um, so fiber metal laminates is another area that we can, um, we can use as a hybrid approach uh, for uh, dead palm fibers. So nanocomposite, another area we are currently working, we are trying to use graphene uh, in polymers and fiber. 
graphene treated uh, material. Well, the benefit that brings is that you can use very small amount of graphene or nanoparticles and that you can enhance property significantly. So you save materials. So that's the idea behind. And you can also enhance thermal performance. So then damage characterization is very important. Uh, structure processing and performance are there, but then properties are, uh, sorry, structure processing and properties are there, but then performance and characterization is very important. So what are the techniques you have got to understand damage behavior is important. Right, so this is a, one of the work that we have been doing uh, for flax fiber alone and then flax fiber and glass fiber and then hybridize them and understand their damage behavior and understand their performance. Right, so again, that, that is uh, the, the continuation of the slide. So I want to now close, hopefully. And then uh, obviously the manufacturing and understanding the defects, long-term defects is very important and then you can use different other techniques. Uh, yeah, so the life cycle assessment is very important. We don't have enough data for natural fiber reinforced composite, especially jet pump fiber reinforced composite. So this is one of the challenges and obviously supply chain is another big challenge that uh, Professor Dr. M um, Midani mentioned this morning. So I, I'm not going to on that. Okay, so long-term durability is very important exposed to different conditions. Again, what is the application area that we need to understand, that we need to understand this behavior? Right, so I'm going to go to close. Oh, yeah, conclusion. Well, there is a serious problem. Environmental issues is serious and it is happening today. So, natural fiber reinforced composite can contribute something, can help something. And then obviously jet pump fiber reinforced composite can also contribute something. So we have a lot of opportunities. Let's continue our work. I think that is what I would, li I I would like to say. Have a hybrid approach can be also used to enhance performance. And then obviously challenges are the design, manufacturing, and understanding damage behavior is always there. But we are in a good progress. We have done a lot of work, there are a lot of things to be done, but if we work as a collaboratively, I'm sure we can achieve that goal. Thank you so much. Okay, big applause for him. Very good works that the uh, Prof. Home de Kahl have done, on the, especially on the biocomposites, by using a different type of nature fiber-based composites, you know, especially towards the application side, you know, because most of us are struggling to get the applications of the nature fiber-based material. So it's already, I warned him long ago, but he take five minutes, uh, 10 minutes more. But it's okay, interesting topic. So I will give the one questions only that, because we need to, uh, what you call, that's the, the, give the mic to them. Huh. Because we have the coffee break, and then we have one session after that of half an hour. Huh. I, hello, thank you so much, uh, Professor, for a very interesting presentation. As a young researcher, I'm really impressed, and uh, I'll really dream like to be with you, like you, in the future. So, my uh, my worry as a young researcher is that, especially in the field of natural fibers, which um, is which is interesting also for me, is that uh, in between myself as a researcher. There is two things. There is the lab work and then to the industrial scale. So what we are doing in the lab, how do we balance these two things to make sure that our results get to the industry scale? So my question is, what are the factors that will make me reach to see my product in the market? That's a very, very good question. And, uh, well, scaling of research is always a challenge. We call technological readiness levels of our research. When we do our lab-based uh, work, maybe we are uh, TLR one, two, three, and then, uh, yeah, then you have to move next level. So you need to have industrial collaboration as much as possible. Sometimes our academic institutions, our research institutions, we are more on that area. So applied research and collaborative research with industry is very important. So what are their issues and what can we do for them will help them. So when we are writing a proposal, invite them to be a part of that proposal. 
So invite them to be maybe, a, a, you know, the end user or, or try to solve some of their issues or try to get feedback from them so that your uh, scaling of your resource can take place. So sometimes what happens is we are very much happy in our lab publishing papers and then so on, but we have less contact or interaction with industries and that limits speed up, speeding up our research. So my answer to that question will be, there's always challenge coming from one, two, three, two, six, seven, um, uh, TLR, but if we know what, what we are doing, what are the end, end results? I always ask my PhD students, what is the property target? This, why? So sometimes we do research, but we need to make a benchmark for aiming certain application so that we can work to, to achieve that goal. Yeah, so there are so many things I can answer, I can suggest uh, to you, uh, but you can come to me and have half an hour on this, you know. <laughs> so, uh, what we call that, that if anybody wants to discuss with him, we have the tea break, so during that you can catch him and discuss that. So, on behalf of organizing committee, I am giving the token of appreciation to him. Am I any photographer? Ah. Ah. We have the coffee break and after 15 minutes we are uh, uh, coming for the session A in, the, uh, in this room, you know.